Notice the 2F fillet weld done with 232. Keep the electrode in the center of the puddle, slightly to the front. Make sure your electrical stick out is correct, three quarters to one inch and make sure that you do not allow the electrode slag to get in front of you. As long as you maintain that travel speed, you watch your puddle, you can see it wetting in on both sides, you should be fine. Here we're going to do a 2F weld, but our problem is going to be our stick out's too long. And when our stick out is too long, notice how erratic the puddle gets. Well, what's happening is, is we're losing current. You can see the big spatter balls coming off. We need to keep our stick out at the prescribed distance. Notice as we get in close, it smooths out. And our puddle looks the way it's supposed to look. Same problem can be if we don't have the proper stick out when we're doing a 2F weld or any weld for that matter if we get too close. Inner shield wires have a real problem when you get too close. And if you, as you notice here, our stick out is much shorter than the 3 quarters to 1 inch that's prescribed. You see how the uh, arc is longer. We tend to think we have a very good weld, but what happens is we end up with porosity. What we as welders have to concern ourselves with is that we pay attention to the puddle. If we really watch it, it'll tell us everything we need to know. As you can see here, we're going way too fast. You can see how narrow and ropey that bead is. We're not going to get exactly what we're looking for, and it's simply because we went too fast. Our travel speed is, uh, we slow it down, we make the proper size bead, almost a 5 16 fillet weld. When welding in the vertical up position with 232 or 233, we want to make sure that our electrode angle into the joint is 90 degrees and that we have a 5 to 20 degree uphill lie uh, with our gun angle. We want to point down into our puddle. If we get into a push angle, what's likely to happen is we will uh, have the electrode punch through our puddle. Now we're going to start a vertical up pass with 232. First thing I want you to notice is where is the electrode on the puddle? Center to bottom. Notice the electrode angle as it enters the joint. Pay very close attention not to get into a push angle. Keep that uh, electrode pointed down. You'll also notice that the electrode is moved slightly side to side within. This is nearly a stringer. If we had just a tad more arc force or more voltage, it might tend to wet in a little bit differently, but at this point we can see how the electrode is right there in the center to the bottom edge of that pole and is giving us a good wet in at the toes. We're going to do a 232 or 233 vertical up second pass stringer. Choose one of the two toes, right or left hand side, slightly oscillate the electrode as you go up, maintaining your lead angle with, the electro with your gun. Now welding the second pass with a stringer bead, notice the electrode angle into the joint and the arc force keeps that puddle out of your, or keeps the slag puddle out of your way. You have a very slight motion and as you notice, if you look at the left hand side of the puddle, that puddle is splitting that first weave by 50%.
we're going to do a second pass full weave with 232 please notice again the electrode stays in the puddle and you do not hold the toes you can just kind of bump and visit but don't stay there like you would with 7018 the tendency is with 232 is to hold the corners like 7018 one of the problems we have going vertically up is travel speed just like in the 2F if we go too fast run ahead of the puddle this wire will cut right through steel like a hot knife through butter. Welding vertical up with 233 is a little different than 232. The only difference is, is the ease of the weld because the slag has a tendency to stay out of your way. Notice yeah, how different it is than 232. 232 slag tends to catch you. We make our same motion, our gun angle's the same, everything's the same except now with this particular electrode. The slag tends to stay out of our way and not give us any trouble with a tendency to catch us. Vertical up, 3G, 232, 233. Gun angle the same as it was with the fillet weld. We're going to have a slight 5 to 20 degree up angle. Going vertical up with 233 in a groove. Start on your runoff tab. Using the same technique that you use for 232, you're going to make a slight oscillation and you're going to pay close attention to that puddle as you make your way vertically up, seeing to it that the puddle touches both bevels, both bevel edges. Now notice the slag system. See how it stays out of your way? 232 wants to catch you. 233 will stay out of your way. As long as you maintain the proper angle and the proper stick out, you'll have no problem with this wire. Starting on your runoff tab, slight side to side weave, keep the electrode going toe to toe on this second pass. Electrode angle very important, don't get into a push, keep it pointed down into the puddle. You notice again, keep that wire in the mid section of that puddle and the arc force will keep the slag out of your way. Also notice that you pause, or can if you wish, to pause slightly at the toes just to allow that puddle to wash in. But don't hold it as long as you would 7018 or you'll end up with a very scalloped weld.
So we go to do our split weave with 233. Techniques are exactly the same. Weave width is exactly the same as it is with 232. Continuing our fill passes, we're doing a slight weave, and please take note, do not make your weave any wider than uh, 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch. Again, notice we have the proper stick out, proper electrode location on the puddle, and it keeps the slag out of our way with no tendency to catch us. Notice the electrical stick out here. Wire should be 3 quarters to 1 inch should be our stick out, slight side to side weave, notice how it's positioned on that puddle, keeping the slag out of our way, carry that weld all the way off onto your runoff tab, and that way we don't have any problems with lack of fill at the top or the bottom. Now we're ready to cap, and as we do our cap pass, again, watch your stick out, watch your travel speed. Having checked our inner pass temperature, we know we're good to go. Notice that the wire comes right to the edge of the bevel. We maintain our width. We don't need to go beyond the edge of the bevel. We just need that puddle to just roll over that edge. Pay very close attention to that, and your bead width will be fine.
fast travel speed with 233 is just as much of a killer as it is with 232. One of the things you'll notice, 232 versus 233, the 233 slag system tends to stay out of your way a lot better than the 232 does. You can see on the edges how the 233 slag stays out of the uh, corners. Welding overhead with 232 or 233, please notice your gun angle, very important, particularly this, the direction of travel you're pointing back into that puddle. Do not get straight up and down and definitely do not get into a push angle. One of the things that we see that is the most problem for someone welding overhead with these wires is they lose their gun angle. Notice as we weld how that gun angle is slowly moving toward a vertical straight in and then it'll, he'll get into a push angle. And what will happen here is he'll completely lose the puddle. The electrode will push right through the puddle and blow through your plate. Welding 4G overhead, start again on your runoff tab. Very important. Keep the electrode pointed back into the puddle. Basically work it toe to toe. Don't get excessively wide. Watch the puddle again. Keep the electrode in the proper placement on that puddle. All will go well as long as you maintain that proper electrode angle. Ready to run our second pass with 232. Again, start on the runoff tab, work your way into the bevel. Point that electrode to each toe as you go slightly side to side. Give yourself the proper electrode angle to keep the slag system out of your way. If you lose that electrode angle with 232, the slag will have a tendency to catch you. And when that happens, then you're going to either trap slag or lose your puddle. Now we're ready to do our overhead with our split weave. Point at one, either the right or left toe. Do a slight side to side weave. Again, with 232, don't need to pause a long time to get this to weld, uh, weld the wash in. 
keeping the electrode at exactly the proper location on our puddle, mid to slightly forward, and we're good. Two thirty three directly overhead again, same as two thirty two. Start on your runoff tab, keep the electrode uh, mid point on that puddle, and pay very close attention as you go toe to toe and watch that puddle wash into both edges of your bevel. And that's pretty much what you have to pay attention to is making sure that that wire just touches both edges of the bevels, you'll be in good shape. Beginning our second pass with 233, watch your electrode placement, but your technique is the same as it was for 232, but again, pay close attention. You see how the slag stays out of your way. It's one of the benefits of this wire. Split weave technique for 233 is again pretty much the same as it is with 232 as far as placement goes. You're going to watch that toe and you're going to use a very slight weave to wash it in. Look at your left hand side of the puddle as it splits that previous pass by 50%. Comparing 232 with 233, the wires essentially, the techniques are the same. The big difference is 233 is a little more forgiving than 232. If you watch closely, the slag system on the 233 will tend to stay away from you, where the 232 will tend to want to catch or try to catch up to you as you make your weld. Welding overhead is something that no one likes to do because of this batter falling down on them. Consequently, they tend to travel too fast. And when they travel too fast, you get lack of fusion, convex welds, and usually lots of trapped slag. Slow down and do it right.
This is what happens when you're in a big hurry. Look at this mess. Here we have the same problem in reverse. We're going too slow. We're too low in the puddle, trying to carry way too much metal. And because of that, we've got all sorts of things falling on our head.